City University of Hong Kong is an international university which emphasizes the integration of research and teaching. The university promotes diversified, cross-cultural studies through various educational programs. To promote our educational vision, City University of Hong Kong produced a series called Beyond Boundaries, Dialogue with Presidents of World's Leading Educational Institutions. Professor Wei Guo, President of City University of Hong Kong, talks to presidents of universities and principals of high schools around the world, exploring each other's strengths and looking forward to the future direction of educational development. In this episode, President Wei Guo will take us to Tohoku University in Sendai, Japan. Over a hundred years ago, Lu Xun, the pioneer of the modern enlightenment movement in China, studied medicine at the Sendai College of Medicine in Japan. The Sendai College of Medicine was later merged into Tohoku Imperial University, which was established in 1907 and became its Faculty of Medicine. Tohoku Imperial University was one of the top universities in Japan, following Tokyo Imperial University and Kyoto Imperial University. It was the third imperial university established by the Japanese Meiji government. Many disciplines and fields of these universities were fully westernized, reaching international standards in a very short time. These universities cultivated lots of leadership and executive talents along Japan's modernization journey. After the Second World War, Tohoku Imperial University was renamed as Tohoku University in 1947. During Japan's rapid economic development in the post-war period, Tohoku University has contributed a lot to talent cultivation, industrial development, as well as scientific and technological research. Japan launched universal education in the Meiji era, focusing on higher education development and cultivated lots of academic talents for Japan. Since the first Nobel Prize was awarded in 1901, Japan has won 26 Nobel Prizes, which is the most award-winning country outside of Europe and the United States. Entering the 21st century, more than two decades of economic stagnation and falling birth rates have affected university admissions and the scale of development. Higher education institutions in Japan are facing new challenges. This program invites Professor Hideo Ono, president of Tohoku University, to talk about higher education in Japan. Professor Wei Guo, President of City University of Hong Kong, is well known for his research on the reliability of electronic systems and nuclear energy. In his early years, he worked at Bell Laboratories in the United States, who held the position of department head and dean of the School of Engineering in an American university, and was conferred academicians in various countries. Professor Wei Guo has served as the president of City U for more than 10 years. His philosophy of education is summarized in the lyrics of the City U anthem. 
which he wrote, Learn and Question Beyond Boundaries. <laughs> Professor Wei Guo has also published several books about education. He is particularly concerned about the challenges facing contemporary education around the world. Welcome to the Forum. Today, we are so pleased to invite President Ono of Tohoku University to the program to introduce to us the higher education system in Japan and the unique feature of Tohoku University. Tohoku University was established in 1907, has been the third imperial university in Japan. It has excelled in quite a few areas. Japanese is a sophisticated people, although every people is sophisticated. Since Minji Restoration, Japan has really overhauled its education system and also actually the whole society. But today, we're not going to talk about Japan, but we like to emphasize the higher education and the universities in Japan. Outside the Western community, Japan has the most um, Nobel Prize winners in addition to many uh, invention, innovation. Do you think that's as part of the Minji restoration, Minzi Weixin? Uh, we need to go back before Meiji Restoration in order to understand uh, the trend that we see today. And uh, that is that uh, even before Meiji Restoration, there were uh, you know, uh, education system uh, in various parts of Japan. And also there are you know, common people uh, who liked mathematics actually to prove theory and put this uh, proof uh, into a nearby shrine, for example. So these sort of, uh, well, I wouldn't say tradition, but it's uh, you know, the people's tendency to uh, like uh, the, uh, the education and also thinking uh, might have uh, laid ground in the later development of uh, uh, the science in our country. Well, it's well known that, um, also according to your hypothesis, the education has been embedded in Japanese people for years. But it's okay to say that uh, the Minzi Restoration adopted Western style education, a West, Western way of thinking. The Chinese also adopted Western you know, practices in higher education. Strictly speaking, uh, roughly the same time, as Tohoku University and uh, uh, University of Tokyo were established. And what are the differences? Uh, why, why are there such a differentiation? Well, um, I can only uh, talk about uh, what happened in, in Japan and what we view uh, uh, what happened in Japan. I, I don't have the capability to compare it with uh, Chinese experience. But um, we, after Meiji Restoration, uh, the Me Meiji government uh, dispatched uh, a number of uh, the brightest uh, students to Europe uh, to uh, engage in uh, uh, research. Mm -hmm. And uh, that they came back and uh, replaced those uh, foreign professors that the Japanese government hired at the time. Uh, I can give you a few examples like uh, Nagaoka Hantaro, uh, Hantaro Nagaoka, who uh, proposed uh, atom uh, structure uh, uh, well before uh, Rutherford uh, proposed. And uh, there was um, many other scientists who just became uh, uh, the top level scientists at the time. So the, the reason I can uh, 
come up with uh, is that uh, that people were sort of ready in the in performing research in a uh, Western context uh, even before the major restoration. But again, that's a theory, and I cannot uh, compare our you know experience with Chinese. Well, certainly this is a big question. We need to discuss this in the future about uh, why the outcomes are so different. Mm -hmm. But certainly, there are so much we can learn from Japan. The development of higher education in Japan began in the Meiji period. Many Chinese youngsters chose to study in Japan at that time. Many famous Chinese scholars and celebrities are alumni of Tohoku University. Let's look at the <clears throat> connection between China and Tohoku. I understand there are a few um, distinguished alumni and famous people in China. They have been educated in Tohoku, so Tohoku has contributed a lot to the development of China. Yes. Will you comment on some of them? Yes, actually, uh, we have um, uh, our medical school. Uh, uh, the pre predecessor of our medical school, uh, called Sendai Medical School, uh, Lu Xun uh, mm. spent some years there. And uh, we are very proud that, uh, so that we can call Lu Xun our alumni. He is, actually. <laughs> and also, uh, in the uh, 1920s, uh, there were two gentlemen, uh, both mathematicians, uh, Cheng Zhanggong and uh, Su Buqing. Uh, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing Very their, their name uh, mm. correctly. And uh, they were the first uh, international student that uh, got doctorate, doctoral degree from uh, Japanese universities. Mm -hmm. And uh, they later became uh, uh, Professor Su, uh, Professor Chen later became a vice president of uh, Fudan University, and Professor Su, I believe, uh, he became. Uh, president of uh, Fudan University. And more recently, I'm very happy uh, because I have uh, worked with him and uh, he is on my, in, this, in my same field. Uh, Chi Kun Xue, uh, Professor Xue of uh, Tsinghua University in Beijing. Uh, he was a researcher and also faculty member of Tohoku University some years ago. He spent uh, eight years in Sendai, so uh, yes. we are good friends. And uh, it's very nice to have those uh, connections uh, between uh, Tohoku and uh, China. How about in recent years? Um, what are the emphasis of the, uh, your subjects? And, and what do you desire to do in the near future? Subjects meaning uh, in, in scholarly terms. Like uh, we are now trying to develop um, uh, international joint graduate school, which combines research strengths with uh, 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 education at the graduate level. Uh, by doing, uh, and they include like uh, disaster science, next generation medicine, uh, and uh, uh, data science, uh, material science. Uh, by doing so, before uh, this program, uh, there were departments and facul faculties with departments, mm -hmm. and they are all, all very much individual uh, and independent. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well, nothing wrong with it, but uh, now we, are, we want to tackle uh, gl global issues, uh, including Jap Japanese issues. And in order to tackle issues, social issues and challenges, uh, we need to have uh, uh, expertise from various fields. And uh, that's what uh, we are pl uh, trying to do, uh, to combine uh, the expertise from various fields like disaster science. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, there's no such science as disaster science yet. And uh, it, uh, historian has to tell us uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, what has happened in, in the past. You know, medical people, has to, people have to tell us, uh, contribute on how we deal with uh, uh, the, the, in the case of uh, disaster. Uh, you know, uh, 
uh, it has also, uh, you know, we also have to uh, implement how we construct our buildings in order to be uh, disaster, uh, you know, on the, on the occasion of disaster, we can uh, limit the damage. So there, it's a, uh, well, you know, very broad subject. And uh, these things uh, we are planning to uh, promote and establish. I think the reason why I'm coming back to the Nobel Prize thing, but the reason why there were there have been uh, many Japanese uh, laureates uh, there is that we do have people uh, who are interested in digging deeper and think you know, deep thinking and going deeper and deeper. Uh, but we also had uh, a system that allowed them to do so in a in a certain stability. We didn't pay mm -hmm. the system didn't pay them. Uh, a lot, you know, it's an ordinary professor. Level. It's not a tangible, but uh, right. I mean, <coughs> but uh, but they enjoyed this freedom yes. and stability, and a certain level of funding which is not competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you become a faculty member at uh, Japanese National University, uh, you get a certain level of uh, funding uh, w without going to uh, outside to get it. I see. But the situation is rapidly changing, uh -huh. and uh, that's uh, so. Japanese academic community was wo is wondering whether we can uh, still produce so many, uh, you know, cutting edge uh, results in the future because uh -huh. people are have to go outside to get funding, yes. and that gives them uh, less time to think about their own interests. And uh, so that's something that uh, I'm, I have to tell the society that it might not be a good, too good an idea to be terribly competitive, uh -huh. which is different from uh, American way. I see. In, in USA, we call it a one-body problem. One-body problem means um, when you hire a person, you consider the spouse. So that's some unique feature. There's one other unique thing in USA is uh, the, the campus autonomy in USA is very distinct. Uh, how is the campus autonomy in Japan? Uh, we haven't had any very strong uh, sort of conflict between the freedom uh, that uh, of academic freedom with other uh, uh, you know, requirement or, 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 or uh, from the society or from the government, but uh, academic freedom is uh, written on constitution. So uh, I would tend to believe that uh, we will uh, have, we will enjoy and have the responsibility of uh, having this freedom. The other questions that I think is important for everyone is, we are facing a lot of new challenges. How do you tackle those challenges, such as uh, your funding uh, profit declining? And as a president, I know you had to look for fundraising. And, and the other one is uh, the population in Japan decreasing too. Yes, almost. it is. Uh, but I would like to view it as, uh, mm, well, including funding. Uh, we engage uh, more strongly with the society, you know, societal needs and innovation. And uh, if we can keep up with and surpass the society's sort of expectations, mm -hmm. uh, I think we are in, in the track of getting more funding and uh, being able to do, uh, conduct more research. And by doing so, uh, I would uh, like to provide our students, as I said, uh, more global and international flavor uh, or international experience. 各位朋友,從今天跟這個大爺校長對談,大家可以知道,呃,在一次了解教育是一個很複雜的問題,我們需要社會的合作,不只是當地的社會環境以及全球的社會環境合作,而且我們遇到很多挑戰,需要大家來
of Tokyo University to shed light of the higher education in Japan, Tokyo, and the view about the world. Thank well, you. Well, my great pleasure, and it was very nice uh, having this opportunity to talk to you. We will bring you to the University of Stuttgart of Germany in the next episode. A university famous for engineering technology and its cooperation with German automobile factories in scientific and technological research. Thank you.